Let's read Luke 18. Arengo Luke 18. Please, after I preach here, I'm coming to you to receive something. Look what? Look at 18. Are you there? Let's Let's look at this parable. From verse 10. Look at 18, Revaluto, verse 10. Maybe we can read to 14. Maybe we'll fit out 14. Two men went up into the temple to pray, one a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. The Pharisee stood and began praying to himself, God, I thank you that I'm not like the rest of men, shineless, unjust, or dishonest, adulterous, or even like this, this tax collector. I fast twice a week and I pay tithe of all that I get. There did, but the tax collector standing at a distance will not even raise his eyes toward heaven but was striking his chest saying God be merciful and gracious to me. And I tell you, this man went home, went to his home justified rather than the other man, for everyone who exalts himself will be humbled. But he who humbles himself will be exalted. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord, for your word. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. I want to talk about having the mind of Christ. The mind of Christ is humbling yourself. Right? Having the mind of Jesus, brackets, humbling yourself. Jesus was teaching about humbling yourself. And he showed these two people that is what you do before the Lord that brings your judgment. He said the reason why people are rejected or accepted is the way they do things before God. Can I tell you this? God does not mind when you do things before Satan. He mind when you do things before him. So, if you do things before him, you are saying he is justifying those things. If you can read there, you see these two people pray, another one say, no. Already when he look at himself, he sees himself better than this one. And he said, God, you can answer me before this one. But read there, you realize that this man was quoting his activity of the past. Listen, God does not care about what you have done in your past. You can bring meaningful of God or what God wants in your present. You can be a sinner long time ago, but when you come before God, when you humble yourself, God can still grant you mercy. God does not look on the mistakes that you have done or the righteousness you have done in the past. This is only us people that will judge you by what you have done. This man 
told God, God, can you see? Manao bodi chama di bora modi mwaba. Better than this guy called tax collector. Because he's a thief. He's wicked. But I tried. I did, I did this, I did that. This is what I've been doing. And God said, no, no, no. Jesus said, who went home being justified? He's the one who says, I'm not even fit to come before you. I know my mistakes. You're the one who can correct me. Tell yourself, humble yourself. Have that mind of Christ. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. When I read about this, I realized that we are getting out of the way. Because the moment when we appear before God, we appear like knowing things. Not like we want to hear from we, you. We appear as people who say, we know, we know. We know. We know. We know. Not forgetting what we think we know. Because what we know is nothing before him. He, he, he wants to tell us what will happen now and future. Not what we know. The Pharisees was basing his life by the experiences. The text collector was crushing his experience and humbling himself and saying you are the one who can justify from now forward. If you read Philippians 2 from verse 5 to 8 you find Philippians there let's read there. Philippians what? Two. Two, five to eight. Let me me mola five. It says, having Kere. this same attitude in yourself, which was in Christ Jesus, in other words, looking to him as your example in selfless humility, who although he existed in the form and unchanging essence of God, as one with him, possessing the fullness of all the divine attributes, uh, the entire nature of deity, did not regard equality with God a thing to be grasped or asserted, as if he did not already possess it or afraid of losing it, but emptied himself. Can you see that? He emptied himself, and then, yes, without renouncing or diminishing his deity, but only temporarily giving up the outward expression of divine, divine equality and his rightful dignity by assuming the form of a bond servant Amen. and being made in the likeness of man. Amen. And he became completely human but without sin. Yeah. Okay, look at verse uh, eight. 8. After he was found in outward appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the Father to the point of death even Amen. the death of the cross. Amen. If you read there, you will see that oh, well, Jesus, who was worthy not to die the death of the cross. Jesus, who knew that he have got God in him and is part of the deity. When he was on earth, he, he left all and humbled himself. When I was learning about Jesus, I realized that there were many, many temptations that could make Jesus to prove that he is part of God. I remember when he was on the cross when they said, if you are a son of God, release yourself and, 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 I mean, and also set us free. And and this was the man that was crucified with him. But Jesus knew that he was supposed to go through this not for his glory, but for God's glory. And when he was on the cross, he said, Father, I'm not worthy to come under the roof, but you are worthy to come under the roof. He was so humble that he all like a slave. as he was worthy to live a life above Slavery. I don't know if you hear it. So now the Bible says, let this mind be in us. In other words, let's take Jesus as an example. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Tell them, take Jesus as your example. Listen, this is the time now of not taking pastors as an example. This is the time of taking Jesus as an example. Because if you take pastors one day, you will hear bad things from people about pastors. It will affect your character. This is the time of saying, I want to humble myself. It is. The Bible says, Temporarily, Jesus, Jesus denied the way he was. Knowing the due season. He withdrew from his attributes. And he left to be what God wanted him to achieve. This is what we need to know. When people come to us and say they are seeing nothing. We need to be able to tell them that they don't know what, what we are saving. We, we accept this situation temporarily because we know what we will become. The Bible says Jesus suffered the shame because of the joy that was before him. He knew that there is something that will happen but he humbled himself knowing the time that will come. Listen, there are many things that this scripture is telling us. One of the things is there are certain things we don't need to do until certain time. There are things that you will do but not now. Can you tell your neighbor? There are things that you will do. But wait. Wait for the right time. So Jesus did the same. I remember there was a time where Mary came and said, hey, these people they have got no wine. He knew, he knew himself. He knew himself. And then Mary pushed him. He knew he can do whatever. There was a time whereby People wanted to push him so that he fall down there. That time he said, I, I know my time has not yet come. I can't die here. He did what he did. If we know our humbling, humbling time, we will feel our breakthrough time. We will know why we wasted time lowering ourselves down. And we know that there is the breakthrough time. There is a breakthrough time. There is an exaltation time. Listen, I love this God because when he wants to exalt you, he does it in front of your enemies. You can be humble when you love at you for a short time. It's like waiting for his approval. Waiting when he say yes, rise up now, rise up now. Someone has been waiting. If you are the one, say I am the one. If you read Matthew 11 verse 29, 11, 29 Jesus was saying take my yoke upon you and learn follow me Le as my disciple for I am gentle and, and humble in a heart and you will find rest. That was Jesus was saying. He said you see, I'm humble in heart. Not outside. I'm humble in heart. I understand why Jesus talked about the humble in heart. Because people were not happy about him also. But he knew that in heart he's pleasing God. I'm sure you understand that. Listen to this. Even if you do the best, you can't please everybody. 
So Jesus was saying the same. He said, okay, look at that verse. He says, take my yoke upon you. In other words, go my way. way. Follow where I'm, where I'm walking. It won't be easy. But at the end, it will be the easy. He says, okay, for for I'm gentle and, and humble, humble where? In the heart. So, whoever takes you the way you think, let him do that. As long as you know your heart. I found that many humble people. They face accusations. They face, I mean, name calling. When you start to humble yourself, people think you are doing that for something. They are right. They are right. You cannot be humble for nothing. I'm not humble for nothing. I will be exalted one day. We, we need Christians when they say, you are just making this because you want me. Say, yes. Because I fear my God and my reward is in heaven. I will humble myself. I'm not just serving God for nothing. I'm humbling myself. I'm not just worshiping for nothing. Listen, there is nothing called nothing in the Lord. You are not wasting time when you sit down and listen to the word of God. No. You are not wasting time when you are giving your offering. No. When you hear God and you do. When you obey what you say. You are not wasting time. You are not wasting time. There will be a time when God says it's enough. And I believe that time has come. Don't be tired at the time has come. My God wants to announce to you. Today, your name will be called the Son of God. My God wants to announce to you. Today, your name will be called out. If you believe, shout hallelujah. Your name will be called out. Today, your name will be called out. If you believe, shout hallelujah. Shake somebody and say, hey, when you see me humbling myself, it's not for nothing. Because sometimes, you know, people think we must live Christianity for nothing. No! Humbling is our way of growing up. If you read James 121, the Bible says, so get rid of all uncleanness and all that remains of wickedness and with a humble spirit receive the word of God which is, which implanted, which is implanted in us. Which is able to save our souls. I love that scripture. It says without humble. Even if you hear the word of God. It won't do anything to you. That, that scripture is straight to the point. Humbling yourself. Now receive the word. No. Did you say. Receive the word. No. He says. Humble yourself first. Now you receive the word of God. And that word of God will save your soul. If not, without humbling yourself, the word of God won't do anything. Can you see why the word of God will speak it, will preach it, and nothing happens? There are things we need to remove. All uncleanness. Wickedness. Let's remove all. Listen, removing these things is not easy. Removing uncleanness is not easy. It's as good as you take people away that are trying to make your life. There are some things you are used to and you find that you have to fight to cut them. You are cutting them. You are humbling yourself. Now you go down because you are not sustained by those things. We, 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 need, we need God today. We need God to lift us up and to lift ourselves up. There, there, there are some things in us that 
you know they are there di through our lives di in a way people will praise us and we can't leave them because and we remember the praise okay, hear it. because we remember the praise so the moment when we want to leave those things and we remember the praise we carry on with those things do you, do you know why people are not humbling themselves it's because of the praise once you hear what people are saying you want to maintain the standard Listen, you are not going to maintain the standard you are going to go to another level I don't know if you are hearing me check someone say my friend I am not born to maintain the standard I am born to a higher standard to go to another level of life check somebody and tell the person again to go to the next level not to maintain what you have do you know that you are not born to to work to work in that company you are working you are not confined to have that house where you are supposed to go to another house and there's the best way of doing it humbling yourself the mind of Christ sometimes when God wants to lift people he exhausts everything they depend on sometimes he makes people who understand you to leave you I, I know some people that God is using before God used them before God used them he allowed the church to be empty. They must go. They don't but support. So that support. when they don't see support, now they support. go to mountain to pray. And when they pray, God will speak. I don't know if you are hearing me. Listen, when God wants to humble you, He allows something you think they are sustaining you. And those things will never come to you. When you are humbling yourself, praying, praying, praying and those things are not coming. He's taking you to a higher level. Listen. It's not that God is not working. He's working because he's taking you from where you are to another level. I don't know if you are hearing me. So he's allowing this situation to be a ladder for you to another level. Tell someone say, hey, don't charge me by my situation. I'm on my ladder. I'm going to another level. I'm on my ladder. I can be delayed for a while, but I'm going somewhere. I can lack for a while, but God is on my side. If you believe, shout hallelujah. hallelujah. How many of you are hearing what I'm saying? If you are hearing, shout hallelujah. There's the word planted in your spirit. And why this word is not working? There are things you are not living. There are things you are not living. I don't know if you are hearing me. There are things that you need to cut them off. If it's someone's support, and this support makes you to see, the right one won't come. Because already you have got a wrong support. If it's a, it's a sex before marriage, the right marriage will never come because already you are in marriage. Cutting it is like humbling yourself. Humbling yourself is like deny yourself of the desires of your flesh. Tell about Humbling yourself is like denying yourself of the desires of your flesh. When everybody is talking about success, you talk about God. When everybody talks about I have money, you talk about Jesus is Lord. We, we need those kind of Christians. Because the Bible says, seek the kingdom, all shall follow. I see all following you. If you believe, shout hallelujah. 
Many times I saw I saw myself doing it. I don't know if you are doing that. But I want to tell you so that you must not do it. Because I'm not doing it. My fasting was very strong. Because I had nothing. I'm sure you understand that. The time when you have all things and you deny yourself you live like you don't have you are humbling yourself. Listen. There was a time where even mama she's normally doing this. I'm just giving you an example. Because I want the mind of Christ. The, the mind of Christ is not to say you can't enjoy your life. No. But you must never allow any thought to exalt itself against the word of God. So, Mama always will do this to me. Even now when I went to rest, she went to the shop. She bought me a chain. You know chain? And take a chain. You know chain? If I wear that chain, I feel like I'm a big man. I look like this. So I realized that. If I want to be normal, I don't need that chain. I'm trying to teach you how humbly yourself. So, Mama will always buy chain. I don't know how many are there now. And then, always, uh, you didn't wear it, I just take it and hide it. Because if I wear it, I just have to open it here. So that you see it. I'm not wearing it for myself. I'm wearing it for you to see. And I said, why must I buy chain to why show you? And why I have to wear something why so that you see the chain? The reason why we are not humbly ourselves, we are living life for other people. You're not living your life. I don't know if you're hearing me. The reason why you wear specs like this man, he wears specs because he is reading, he's reading. But there are people who are just wearing specs. So that people will see that. I'll just give you an example. I don't know if you're hearing me. Tell everybody, say, I want to do things. Not for someone. I want to live my own life. I don't know if you're hearing me. How many of you want to live your own life? I prophesy you. That God is restoring your life. If you believe, shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen, people will think you are making yourself better from now. When you are doing your own thing for yourself, not for someone, for your God, not for someone. I'm sure you understand that. That is humbling yourself. But Wearing something for someone It's not you. God wants you to be you. God wants He wants to look at you and sees you. He wants to take you to a level. Don't do it. Don't do it for someone. Do it for yourself. If you believe, shout hallelujah. Let's read First Peter. I'll just give you scriptures. First Peter. Petro Three. Chapter 3. 8 to 9. You will love this verse. 8 to 9. First Peter. Tell somebody say, I want to live my life. Humbling myself. That's the mind of Christ. First Peter chapter what? 3. Verse what? 8 and 9. Can I read for you? Listen to that verse. It says, Finally, all of you be like-minded, united in spirit, sympathetic, brotherly, kind-hearted, courteous, conscious, and compassionate towards each other as members of one household. 
is Amen. what I was trying to show you here. And humble in spirit. Can Amen. you see the verse there? Amen. And never return evil for evil or insult for insult. But on the contrary, give a blessing or pray for one another, well-being, contentment and protection. For you have been called for this very purpose. That Amen. you might inherit a blessing. You have been called for this very purpose. Amen. That you might, in, you might inherit a blessing. You are called le, for le, this le, purpose. So you are called for le, this le, purpose. Le, if you become like-minded, humbling yourself, le, go, go, you are called for that purpose of inheriting a blessing. Inheritance is what you have never worked for. Can you ask your neighbor, do you have inheritance? I think all we have, we have worked for now. We are called to humble ourselves. And now when we look at each other with a humble spirit, we will inherit what we have never worked for. You know, I, I will see how I'm working. I say, this working issue is, there are times when I reach home, I find, when I speak, I found that I'm very, very tired. And I look on what I inherited. I found, I found that I've been working. Even yesterday I was working. I love to work. But you know, if we humble ourselves, there are things that will come without working. I don't know if you're hearing me. I, I'm not preaching that to you, even to myself. Because inheritance is a promise. God is promising us there's something that must come to us. It's going to be called a blessing. But it's inherited. I don't know if you're hearing me. I see someone here receiving what he has never worked for. Can you be a Christian who is like-minded? Who loves others? Who humble yourself? To extend that you can even do things that people say you are not worthy to do. If we reach that level, we are blessed. I don't know if you're hearing me. Because we, are, we know we are do that because of the inheritance that is coming. Just as my friend, something is coming to you. How many of you are ready for inheritance? I want to show you what what you know, what this thing does when you, when you humble yourself. It's not issue of you will be lifted up. No, no. Let, let me show you from scripture. If you read Luke 1 46 to 49 46 to 49 you, you will see Mary say I, I'm not just chosen. It's because I was humble. Mary, for her to give birth on something without Maria, anybody's ability. If you read there, she, she shows that when she visited Elizabeth, the moment when she greeted Elizabeth, the child lived inside the womb. When, when, when Elizabeth was when she was speaking, she was not speaking about uh, Mary. She says, she, she began to speak about the child that was inside Mary. 
to show that this child was so special that even the, the child, child before it comes out was so special to be talking about. I don't know if you're hearing me. You, you know, if you know you're pregnant about something, you, you, you just understand that there is something special that will come. You won't worry about any pains. You see, when you read that, you find, you find Mary say, she says, God never regard me just a lowly servant. A humble in spirit. She was speaking about this. God never just chose me. He chose me because I was humble. When God looked at Jerusalem, he saw Mary as a humble person. Listen, for the things to happen, for the plan of God to come to pass, be humble, and something will happen. I see someone here giving but something he never worked for. The plan of God is about to be fulfilled in your life. I see some people here from this week they will give us testimonies that comes because they handle themselves. Listen, when God wants to do something, he look around the humble. He does not do anything. He look around the humble. For example, I see God looking around you today. He's looking around you here. Around the humble to do something. When he look around, he saw a virgin. Most of the time we call Mary a small girl. The Bible says she was a virgin. You know the meaning of a virgin? It's not a small girl. It means other people were busy with their things. But they say I can't do anything. I don't know if you're hearing me. She says, I can't do this. I'm humbling myself and God will do something. I prophesy someone who's listening to me. You have been waiting like Mary. Though you are not married complete. Though there's nobody around you. I prophesy that this week something from above will come upon you. If you believe, shout Hallelujah. Hallelujah. James 4 verse 10 says, Humble yourself in the presence of the Lord. He will lift you up. Lift you up means he will give you a purpose. Humble yourself. He will give you a purpose. I want to give you, I want to tell you some things about this. When I wait upon God, I can lead I'll tell you. Tell you. you know what God does? He gives me a certain thing that other people cannot do. do it. it becomes a purpose. If you do common things, you won't be recognized. Purpose is not common. It can be done by one out of a million. If you are doing common things, it's not purpose. If you humble yourself, you, if you humble yourself, there's a two season. And this season is now. I say it's now. God won't look at your experience. God won't look at your failure. He will lift you up from today. I see you living a life of a purpose. I see God raising you. If you believe, shout hallelujah. Listen, I was asking myself that why we have people who does things that we won't do? Why Who do, do things that we won't do? do? I realized that they waited. And they were like stupid. Others were like underground. You can't, can't even see them. Later you just hear there's whom who. I believe you are the one. Are you not the one? I believe you are the one. You have been waiting. And people are talking around you. But you don't mind. You have been waiting. And you wanted to serve your purpose. You humble yourself until this time. My God will lift you right now. If you believe shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Say I'm born for something. 
I, I will never die until I live that kind of life. There are some Christians who are here. You don't need to judge them by humbling themselves. When they are humbling themselves, God allowed that situation to happen to them. Sometimes they left things. Sometimes it's tough. Sometimes they are not rich But I'm here to tell you that God has allowed it with a certain reason. I see God lifting you. This week I see God appointing you for something that you were crying for for many years is coming to you in the name of Jesus. If you believe, shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are not late. You are not denied. Something is happening right now. I see your uplifting. I see a level that God is raising. And no one will be able to pull you down. If you believe, shout hallelujah. The reason why we are humble, we know where God is taking us. The reason why we are humble, we know God that is about to do a new thing. Listen to this. I'll, I'll give you an example. Makarani says, not so much anointed. I'm not so much anointed than other servants of God. I know some servants of God were very much anointed. But by the time when there was issues of TV, when I told my wife, she said, When I told my wife, let's wait. I was burning to have a TV very fast. But I said, let's wait. But I said, okay, let's go to other TVs. So that we learn from there. I said, no, 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 we need our own TV. Because God told me about all over the world, Charles all over the world. I can't reach all over the world without him. I said, let's wait. You know, when the time came, it's when I was saying, if mama say it, it means time has come. I went to mama and said, mama, can we go for TV? She said, yes. I said, yes! Mama 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 said, yes! By that time, Mama said, yes! Many people, Mama said, were looking on TV, looking for new things. There comes Mavetane, they say, who's this one? Who's this one? Listen, when you wait, how later? By the right time of people searching for you, they will find you. I don't, know, I don't know if you are hearing me. They will find you without struggle. Now, everybody knows that there is Makaranisa. You know why? Because I waited and I humbled myself and by the time when God says right time, everybody began to fight. This listen, listen. I'm not saying that you are not supposed to wait or wait. But I'm saying there's a time appointed. And that time, God say I must tell you, it's now. It's not tomorrow. It's now. The reason why I'm preaching this message is because there is you in the message where God wants to exalt you and raise you to do things that your family has never seen if you feel shout hallelujah let me shout and tell you this as you have been waiting I'm here to tell you the cry of many nights are over today you are about to break forth and become what God wants you to be and nobody has got nothing to do about that this is the time you have been waiting for I'm shouting to say as I'm announcing you before God I say hey you were not wasting you were waiting for this time of now 
I say you've been waiting. I say you've been waiting. I have been waiting. I have been waiting. I have been humbling myself. 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 I comes even the unnoticeable people even the unnoticeable people people cannot notice they are able to notice you you know there's a season that when God says in two seasons you'll be exalted it means there are some people who say it's their season but there's your own season alone where people will talk about the greatness of your God this is your season I said, this is your season. You have been humbling yourself. And people are speaking against you. You have been worrying, waiting. And people are criticizing. But I'm here to tell you, this is your time to rise up in your family, your family, with the Lord, because of you, in your family, your name is about to be a child. Listen, I'm hearing that when you pass, even those who cannot notice, they will say, This one is the child of the living God. I don't know if you are hearing me. Shake somebody's head. I've been waiting. I've been waiting. This is my time. Take my stage. I've been waiting. People were laughing. This is my time. This is my season. This is my season. You know, this morning I asked God, go say, uh, I told you last week that things have changed. And everybody say, No, I've told you that I'm raising people. I know this is your season. When you drive a car, when you park it, you will find people surrounding it. Shaking their it is your season. I don't know if you are hearing me. People will come and ask you, where do you stay? Listen to this. By the time of Jesus, when the disciples of John, when they hear that he is the Lamb of God, they follow him. The first thing they ask, where do you stay? Because they knew that Jesus is worthy to, to have a mansion. People will love to associate with you. They will come to you because they are expecting the 
best. This is a season of the best. Walking like the best. And living like the best. So it is my season. I have got a mind of Christ. It is my season. Listen. When you see the humble, don't laugh at them. The moment you see the humble, don't joke about that. When you see delay on certain people, you don't know what is happening with them. Because the time of being announced by God, when it comes, you will feel like you know nothing. I prophesy someone. I prophesy someone. Who is here right now? Who is here right now? Who is here right now? I said there's anointing of announcing you as a leader to lead to lead and to live your life I say it is your season you have been humbling yourself the mind of Christ is working for you right now right here I see God I keep lifting you I exalting you I see God raising you. It is your time. Say so it is my time. If you finish, shout. Hallelujah.